What is going on everyone? Welcome to part 13 of our Finance with Python tutorial series using Quantopia and Zipline. In this tutorial we're going to be talking about building on top of this kind of long short strategy that we were working on. So uh, just to revisit that again we've got our the symbols that we're interested in here are the spider ETFs for all you know basically the main major sectors and then in our handle data we're just trading moving average crossovers. So some people seemed still confused about what like even just a moving average is. So I went ahead and recorded those down at the bottom along with leverage. You should probably always record leverage. Uh, it's so easy to over leverage your account. So I've started recording it based on everything I write now. So uh, coming over here, I went ahead and ran the strategy here. And um, so here's the results that we got. You've already seen this. But then we can see here uh, the moving averages. So the way that's working is you've got a, a moving average that's quick and one that's slow. And so the quick moving average, it's basically a moving average is just a moving window of average prices. Okay, so a 20-day moving average today would be today's price plus 19 days prices ago. Put those together, create an average. Good. We do the exact same thing tomorrow and the next day and the next day. So it kind of smooths out price a little bit. Uh, when you do that. So you can even see that here that as price starts going up here, you know, following the S&P 500, you can see uh, that indeed the moving averages are going up, up, up. And then as this starts to fall, the quicker moving average starts to react. Uh, and then the slower one just takes a while. So anyway, what we're doing is as this shorter, this kind of bluish moving average, when it's below the longer moving average MA2, we're in short mode. So we're basically shorting all these, all those tickers. And then when it's above, we're going long or we're just, we're buying them. And when you go short, basically what you've done is you've sold this, you've sold that ticker and basically you've sold it with the intention to buy it back later. So it allows you to borrow it from somebody else. You sell their shares and then later on you buy them back. And the hope is that you buy them back at a cheaper price, give them back to that person and you've made money. So anyways, uh, that's the strategy that we're going to be working on. And uh, I've been live testing it uh, since uh, I guess the 19th or the 18th or I guess actually the 17th. So we start, I started it on the 17th and actually we've lost money, but we're still, we're pretty well beating the market at the moment. We're doing like four times better than the market right now because it's just been kind of slipping. Uh, but anyway, uh, there's that that's been running. And then I also wanted to go ahead uh, and bring up the latest uh, news from Quantopian. They just updated this uh, a couple days ago about the contest rules for July, which it is right now. Uh, just today is July 1st for me. And um, basically they're, the update here is that they want everyone to be hedged instead of uh, kind of more of like a high risk by one, one company kind of situation uh, where you can blow up. So I also want to go ahead and stress and kind of talk in this tutorial a little bit about what are hedge funds? Like what actually is a hedge fund? And because I think a lot of people have a misconception about how the world of finance works. So a lot of people want to come into finance and they look at maybe a strategy like this and the only thing they ever care about is did we beat the market? Yes or no? And like that's the only thing people care and then maybe they'll bring in alpha and beta and some sharp and they'll be like did we beat the market with good alpha, beta and sharp let's say. And if you did beat the market, great. If you didn't, then what the heck are you doing here, right? <laughs> and actually that's not really the case. So a lot of people uh, come to the field of finance with uh, a little bit of bias because most people playing in the world of finance are relatively poor compared to the big institutions that are hedge funds, okay? So most people aren't billionaire hedge fund managers, right? They are your typical person who's trading with maybe $25,000 to $100,000 account, and that's it. So that kind of person, the kind of person who has a twenty-five dollars to $100,000 account, what do they want, right? Well, that person probably wants to see high risk, high yield. They want to see a good, a good amount of returns. They're not going to be happy with like, you know, 5% returns a year or 10% a year or something like that. They want more. But then kind of try to put yourself in the shoes of somebody who has maybe $25 billion. What would you want? Would you want your $25 billion in a high-risk, high-yield situation? Or are you trying to protect your assets at that point? Well, most billionaires, uh, they're engaged in protecting assets. That's what they want to do. So 
the reason why we have these billionaire hedge fund managers is, or billion dollar hedge fund managers, I should say, is what they do typically, I mean, the definition of a hedge fund is hedge fund, okay? Nowadays, hedge fund has been kind of skewed to mean a lot of stuff, but a hedge fund traditionally is a fund that hedges the market. And now what does that mean? Well, here's a perfect example of us hedging the market. Where the market drops, we go up, right? And almost it's a zero sum, right? It, we lost a little bit of money there, but it was almost a zero sum. So ideally a hedge fund, what it's going to do is it's going to take the risk out of being in the market. So consider like the, the housing crisis, uh, which is basically like right here where we hedged the housing crisis. Um, the, the problem with the housing crisis is over the period of a few months, people were worth half of what they were worth initially. So not only is it billionaires with maybe large estates that they're trying to manage and keep, it's also companies. So companies are also sometimes the biggest supporters of hedge funds. So a good example of companies or, or just people that kind of have started up with these hedge funds would be like the entire options market. So the idea of the options market is you've got your farmers. This is actually this is really basic because nowadays farmers don't even own their uh, livestock usually. But you've got a farmer, and let's say let's say this farmer is growing corn, okay? But the problem is corn takes so much time to grow, and when it's time to sell that corn, it's time to sell that corn. We can't just sit around and wait a few months for price to be where we want to be to sell our corn. We kind of need to sell that corn quick. And um, so the options market came around because farmers... Their, their a farmer's profit margin is not very big, so a farmer can't hope, <laughs> right, for price to be just perfect when it comes time for them to actually move their bushels of corn, let's say. So the options market comes around, and so Mr. Finance comes to the farmer and says, hey, I would like to sign a contract with you that's basically going to say, I will buy this corn from you on this date for this price. So, cool. The, the farmer's happy because he knows exactly how much money he's going to make per bushel of corn, let's say. And and then from that moment on, the Mr. Finance goes and starts trading these little options papers, basically these little contracts that say, I'm going to buy this for this much money on this day. And they just, they play that game for a while. And what that does is it smooths out the market. But who's it smoothing it out for? Farmer guy. Okay, so other people are trying to make money, but at the end of the day, the purpose of this, all of this nonsense, is so the farmer can reliably have his uh, income. Okay, so while that's a super basic example, there are also massive companies that engage in this exact same process. So think about like the meat industry. Okay, so um, one of the one example of this would be like the Cargill, right? So they're they're involved in the meat market and the meat industry. And so what does Cargill do? Well, Cargill is dependent on returns. And what companies like this are going to do is they're going to hedge against uh, the market of meat. Okay, so they've got traders, and these traders, their job isn't to make money in the meat market. That's not their job. Their job is to smooth out the fluctuations in the meat market. So no longer are we working for Trader Joe, we're working for, you know, big, uh, big man Cargill over here. But the same kind of purpose, it's to smooth out the market, right? This is asset protection. And so when we look at Quantopian, what they're trying to do is protect assets, okay? So the hedge fund of Quantopian, at least to me, is appearing to their goal is not necessarily to beat the market. That's not what they're trying to do at at least Quantopian. They're trying to be more of a traditional hedge fund to the point where they're trying to cancel out market risk. So it, just because you make a strategy on Quantopian, it's not so much whether or not you beat the market. They want low beta, they want hedge. That's basically it. So uh, for that reason, even though I made this strategy before this even came out, um, that's just more of like my belief. But luckily, it's uh, happened to be the case that this is also their belief. And so we're able to kind of continue on. <laughs> that would have stunk if they changed to something else, I suppose. But anyway, they're looking for people that are hedging algorithms. So the basic definition of, an, of the hedge would be an algorithm that, the, that both will go long and short. And that's basically required uh, to do. So anyways, uh, I just wanted to get that out as far as 
what actually goes on in the world of finance. So it's not all about just making big money. It's it's about smoothing out. It's about asset protection. A lot of times there's probably more jobs out there to protect people's assets than there are jobs out there. Or at least there's probably, there's probably more money, I suppose, like on the line to protect assets than there is money to like grow assets, right? Like everybody wants you to make money. Like your Quantopian strategy has to earn money, right? Because otherwise we'd be in the market. But almost everybody compares their earnings, say, to the S&P 500, when really you probably should compare your earnings to like, I don't know, bonds or something like the 10 year bond yield or something like this. Like that's what you should be comparing to because people are looking for multiple places to put their money. So also before I close this out, uh, like a lot of people that are invested in hedge funds, that's not their sole investment. Okay. So the people that are going to fund Quantopian, chances are that's not their only investment. They've probably got money in all kinds of places. Quantopian, the goal of Quantopian isn't to beat the market, right? Because the, the investors don't care about that. They already have money in the market, right? <laughs> they're invested in the S&P 500, let's say. Uh, they're probably in some mutual funds. They're probably in some other hedge funds. And they're probably just like sitting in some ETFs and stuff like this. So they're going to have a diverse portfolio. So they're not only focused on like one strategy. So uh, just keep that in mind. There's a lot of options out there in the world besides beating the market. If you can smooth out the market, like if you could find a way to have a nice smooth return with very little drawdown, that would be probably... Uh, way more valuable than a strategy with a lot of fluctuation, yet it, say, doubles the market. So keep these things in mind as we kind of go through. But um, this one kind of ran, I didn't plan to spend this much time on like one video talking about hedge funds, but it's really important that people understand what's going on in the field of finance because a lot of people are interested in finance, but they kind of have this misconception about like what's the actual goal and some people want to be maybe hired on as a hedge fund manager, but they don't even understand the purpose of the hedge fund that they're trying to get hired on to. So it's important that we understand these things as we, as we move forward. Uh, so anyways, what we're going to be doing in the next tutorial is we're going to be uh, returning to this original kind of long short strategy and I'm going to show you guys how we can bring in machine learning so with Python machine learning is as close to plug and play as possible <laughs> it's really simple so I want to show you guys how we can incorporate machine learning into Quantopian uh, we're not going to be talking about the fundamentals of machine learning I'll try to point you in the right direction for that because you'll need that if you're going to use machine learning but I want to show you at least tying in machine learning is really quick and really easy, uh, really in Python, but it's just as easy on Quantopian. So that's what we'll start doing in the next tutorial. So stay tuned for that. If you guys have any questions or comments uh, on this tutorial or really anything leading up into this point, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.